Hi, and welcome to the fifth module of the Benchmark webinar series. If you haven't already, check out the main Benchmark webinar for more information on what the Benchmark survey was and an overview of the CRISPR workflow, as well as check out the other modules in this series where we go over other specific points. In this module, we're looking at comparing your options. So what we want to cover is the true costs of CRISPR editing in terms of time and money spent, what are other options you have, especially in this day and age where you may not have access to the lab, what can you do to keep your work going? And then lastly, give you a checklist so that if you do want to go out and shop around, which we highly recommend that you do, how can you best compare your options? So we're here at the end of the journey where we're now, we have some cells. But the question really is, do we have to do all of this work ourselves? As I mentioned previously, all of these other steps take a lot of time and effort and require a lot of optimization. And there is a real CRISPR challenge. What we learned from the benchmark report is that most scientists are only getting about an editing efficiency of 43%. It takes multiple attempts to achieve a CRISPR edited cell line and many people are not very satisfied with their results. So this is definitely a huge challenge in the field. Lastly, scientists are spending a tremendous amount of hands-on time to create these CRISPR-based models. So this doesn't include incubation time. So is there a better way? And if we combine all of these things together, what is the true cost of CRISPR? So what is the true cost of CRISPR? Well, we were able to calculate this from the benchmark report and put it into a calculator. So from the results that people give, it, give to us based on the reagents that you're using. So in this case, this is for plasmid and lipid-based transfection. People were on average spending just under $20,000 to create a clone and over 115 um, hands-on hours to complete this, which averaged to about 16 weeks. Uh, so it's a huge amount of time to create a knockout clone. Now we have the option of, which is a little bit more affordable, to take a, an edit and get a knockout pool delivered, and then you can take that pool and do the clonal isolation yourself. So this takes out the pain of doing the edits and optimizing for that particular cell line, and if you look at these costs, we've been able to save over $14,000 if you include the reagent cost as well as the labor that you'd have to do. And we've shaved down the hands-on hours uh, by almost 100 hours and we can finish about half time sooner, so only at eight weeks. And obviously we're getting a much higher efficiency, so you can always use that pool straight away and don't have to take it to clone and that will also shave off more time and money in the process. And lastly, we can go all the way through and make the knockout cell clone. And this will also save you quite a bit of money in comparison of doing it yourself. So you're saving around $5,000, as well as shaving off about seven weeks uh, for us to do the entire workflow. So you'll get the clone in about nine weeks. Um, and so obviously the, the efficiency here is going to be 100% because we're going to deliver you a knockout cell clone. So if you're using lentivirus or another type of transfection, check out the CRISPR calculator where you can put in your own parameters and it will show you the kind of savings that you can get by outsourcing either part or all of the CRISPR workflow. So if you do are considering outsourcing, especially if you can't get into your lab at the moment, we've put together a really handy checklist to make sure that if you do go to other people, maybe a core that you're, you can work with, that you ask the right questions to make sure that your edits and your cell lines are done appropriately. As you don't want to spend all this time and money and get something that may not be usable on the other side. So as we've talked about in the benchmark report webinar series, you have to be very cognizant of what reagents are being used. 
Obviously, we recommend ribonuclear proteins and synthetic single guide RNA as part of that ribonuclear protein complex. And we highly do not recommend plasmodin off targets, uh, plasmodin lentivirus, because there's off target concerns using those two, and the efficiencies are generally not higher. We recommend that they try at least three guides if they're doing this as a service. And asking how they optimize the transfection. Do they do a 200 point transfection optimization? And if not, what do they do? How do they optimize the transfection? How do they know they have the right parameters to be able to guarantee or at least be successful with making the cell lines that you're asking for? How do they transfect the cells? Are they using electroporation, which is considered the gold standard for editing cells? We know that lipid-based transfection will reduce the efficiency of that transfection by 20 to 50%, again, reducing the potential for them to succeed in generating that model. And so we at Synthago always use electroporation for all of our editing. Do they use antibiotic selection? This is a common way of shortening turnaround time. However, we do not recommend it as it can generate unwanted biological effects. And you technically still should be doing a single cell cloning protocol after antibiotic selection if you go down that route because you still need to isolate genetic pure populations. How are they testing editing efficiency? We recommend some form of sequencing, whether it's Sanger or NGS, and then analyzing using software such as ICE. If they're using T71 or other enzymatic assays, as we mentioned in the analysis module, these are not accurate. And so we do not recommend these be used for any editing workflow. How are they ensuring that single cell clones are actually derived? At Synthago, we have an automated image verification process. So what does your particular choice do? And how long are they quoting for turnaround time? And how reliable is that turnaround time? This is going to be dependent on their capacity and their queue. Do they only have two scientists who are working on a whole institution's projects? At Synthago, we do not have a queue and we have an entire lab filled with scientists and associates ready to take your project. So we have no queue at Synthago and we are operational during the COVID-19 pandemic. What kind of guarantees are they offering? At Synthago, the vast majority of our projects come with a 100% money back guarantee. So if we cannot get the project that you asked us to make, we do not take any of your money. This is a pretty big guarantee to offer. We are one of the only ones to offer such a robust guarantee. So what is your other providers offering you and what kind of risk is associated with it? And lastly, how do they know they will be successful? At Synthago, we have conducted over 100,000 edits and we continue to optimize our workflow to get the very, very best results. So how do you know that you're going to put down a potentially a lot of money, how do you know you're going to actually get the cell lines that you want and move your research forward? So this is a quick checklist so that you can really ask the best questions and make the most educated decision whether or not you outsource with us or anyone else or decide to do it yourself. This is a good thing to, to check. So what I hope I've shown you in this webinar is that the CRISPR workflow can be challenging. It does have very high costs, as you saw. It can average about $20,000 to make a knockout cell line, and it's actually cheaper to outsource it through Synthago uh, than to do it yourself at that range. If you do choose to outsource, check out our checklist to make the best educated opinion. And we know that a lot of people want to do this themselves. CRISPR is a very hot technology, but we also want to be transparent. CRISPR is not easy. And very few scientists are satisfied with their results. So we want to give you the option of being able to do this yourself, as well as having a fallback plan and being able to give us that work so your research can continue to move forward. Because ultimately, your research is usually not going to be on the CRISPR technique yourself. It's a means to an end to get results so you can further your work and keep building on the amazing research that, that you guys are generating. So as a reminder, please check out the other modules in this series where I covered a, a whole range of topics, such as why tools matter and the reagent choice in doing a CRISPR experiment, how best to optimize, how to analyze your edits, 
how to do single cell cloning. And lastly, this video was on how you can comp compare your options. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at synthago.com slash contact. And thank you for your attention. We hope you enjoyed this series. And please let us know if we can do anything to help your CRISPR workflow.